Well, hello to my Sunday School friends. It is really good to see you. I hope you are doing well. Summer's almost over. Enjoy it while you can. School is coming and all those opportunities for you to learn new things, to spend time with your friends, to honor your teachers. It's going to be great. Now, let's review where we are. We remember that Solomon messed up being king of Israel. God told him that he was going to take away most of his kingdom, but because God loved David and wanted to still honor David, one of Solomon's sons, Rehoboam, would keep control of one of the tribes, the tribe of Judah, that had its land down in the south. But that ten of the tribes would have a new king, not one of Solomon's sons, and the new king would be Jeroboam. You remember all of that, right? You remember uh, that, that when Solomon died, uh, it worked out exactly like that. That Rehoboam uh, was talked foolishly and recklessly, uh, and that only the tribe of Judah decided to make him their king. Ten other tribes turned their back on him, uh, and, and they, uh, they wound up making Jeroboam their king. Now, you remember that God's prophet had come to Jeroboam and had told him many years ago that he was going to be king, and that if he would obey God, if he would keep God's commandments, that God would bless him and his family, and they would continue to be the king over the northern ten tribes, the country called Israel. So we have Israel in the north with Jeroboam as their king. We have Judah in the south as with Rehoboam as their king. Now, it all worked out like God's prophet said. It all worked out. Jeroboam is now king of Israel. He's king of the ten tribes. He remembered what he was supposed to do, but he didn't do it. He didn't keep God's commands. One of the first things he thought to himself was, I don't want my people going down to Jerusalem to worship God. If they go down to Jerusalem, if they go down to Judah, they may decide that they like Rehoboam better than they like me. They may want Rehoboam to be their king. They may kill me. So I have to keep them from going to Jerusalem. I have to keep them from going to the temple. I have to keep them from honoring God, what will I do? He didn't pray about it. He didn't think about it. He didn't ask the prophets of God about it. He didn't ask the Levites about it. He thought and he thought and he remembered that Solomon had built many beautiful temples to foreign gods, to idols. He remembered that when he was hiding in Israel from Solomon's, or in Egypt from Solomon's anger, that they had beautiful temples there to other gods. And he thought to himself, I know what to do. So he gathered a whole bunch of gold and he made, he had made, two golden calves made out of gold. And he called the people of Israel together and he said, Behold Israel, these are your gods. These are the gods that got you out of slavery in the land of Egypt, took you through the Red Sea, led you through the wilderness, provided for you and saved you from your enemies. It's too far for you to go down to Jerusalem and go to church. It's too far far. It's too hard for you. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to build two beautiful temples really close to you, really convenient. I'll put one at Dan and I'll put one at Bethel. At each of them, I will put one of these golden cows, your true God, and you should come to church in Dan or Bethel instead of going to Jerusalem. And just to make sure that they didn't go to Jerusalem. He had high holy days, festival days, feast days on the same days in Dan and Bethel that, is, that Judah was worshiping at the temple in Jerusalem. Oh, God was not happy. And God sent his prophet to Jeroboam and said, what you have done is incredibly wicked because you have done it. A new king will sometime come to power down in Judah, a descendant of David. His name is Josiah. He will come up here. He will pull down these buildings. He will smash these altars. He will destroy these golden calves, and your kingdom will be taken from you and from your family. Now, so that you know I'm telling the truth, right now, God will destroy this altar where you're standing. God will destroy it and the ashes will roll on the ground. Oh, Jeroboam was so mad, and he said to his guard, Seize him! And as he held out his arm, as he tried to grab the prophet, his arm became stiff, and it would not move. And at that very moment, 
The altar in front of him crumbled and the golden calf cracked. Uh, Jerob Jeroboam was terrified. You know, he knew that God was real. He knew that the stuff God's prophets have said have come true. He was scared out of his mind and he said to the prophet, please pray for me that God would heal my arm. The prophet prayed for him and his arm was healed. And Jeroboam said, come home with me. I will feed you. You can rest. Come home with me. And the prophet said, I wouldn't come home with you for half of your kingdom. God commanded me not to stop, not to eat or drink, but to go directly home after I conveyed this word. I am leaving. So he left. Now you'd think that Jeroboam would have learned his lesson. But you'd be wrong. Jeroboam knew what God wanted him to do and decided not to do it. He hired more men to be priests of his false gods. He continued to lead the people of Israel away from worship of the one true God. He helped them ignore the commandments of God, the commandments of the law of Moses. He did what he wanted in order to preserve his power. And you're going to find out how that ends for him. But I'm sure you can guess already. It's so important that we listen to God and do the thing God commands us to do because God wants our lives to be good. He wants the world to be better. He's not trying to hurt us. He's not trying to ruin us. He's not trying to take away our freedom. He's trying to set us free. So you pray for me and I'll pray for you. And we'll remember Jeroboam and his great foolishness, knowing the right thing to do and deciding to do something different. And we'll remember that that never, ever works out. You take care. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.